Hello, this is Pastor Gene Kim from San Jose Bible Baptist Church. If you hear any background noise, then I apologize for that one because I am in the office over here, so then there's going to be other people making noises that you're going to hear. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that I do want to apologize for those who are wondering what happened to me online. Hopefully you did look at the video title or you either looked at my comment below the video explaining that we had technical difficulties. As some of you may be already aware, there's a huge slowdown within our internet world because they weren't prepared for millions of people cramming onto the servers. So because of that, there was a major slowdown. Me, uh, my members and I, we did prepare ahead at least four days prior, setting up the tech, making sure the live stream was working effectively, but it did not work to the full effect that we wanted it to be done. But I just want to mention this is that this Sunday, you will see me live streaming. I'm not exactly sure when, but it should not be earlier than 11 a.m. and it should not be later than 12.45 p.m. So around that slot, you will see me preaching Sunday. And this time, it should definitely be a success. Uh, we conglomerated efforts with uh, Pastor Kyung Kim and Pastor Mike Shrive. And actually, we're going to take turns in preaching. So within our Real Bible Believers channel, you will see me and Pastor Shrive going back to back with each other. So you people actually get a bonus of live streaming both Pastor Shrive's sermon and mine. Uh, many of you already posted encouraging comments to his video and I hope that that video was a great replacement at least where I was unable to fill in the gap for some of you who wanted to watch. I also recommend that if you didn't watch any Sunday preaching from me today but you really want to, to watch my video, Storms Cannot Destroy My Blessed Assurance. Storms Cannot Destroy My Blessed Assurance. If you watch that video, I'm sure that can very much make up uh, for my sermon that I was not able to preach today. And the Lord might use that sermon, who knows, where you might actually need it at this trying hour. Maybe that's the reason why the Lord did not allow it to succeed. But as you might know, uh, the devil and certainly the elites or whoever's out there does not want the word of God and the word of truth to be preached. So I did some... I did expect the worst case something like this to happen, but that is okay. Uh, the Lord, he's always in control, number one. Number two, the church and I have always been prepared and ready for worst case situations like this. So thankfully, Pastor Shrive Sermon made up for it, as well as a lot of other videos that we posted and informing people about a replacement sermon that I preached a long time ago that you can watch. I also want to mention that because some of you have been watching me for years that the Lord is in control. He's still on the throne. And because of that, his church will march on till the rapture. God has to rapture somebody, right? So his church has to march on. Now, some people, they might be worried that they lack preparation with the coronavirus and they may be lacking supplies because they haven't been prepared as much as they should have. Or maybe some of them are thinking, well, I just got news of this now, so, I mean, I'm regretting what I did. I should have prepared much earlier. Other people, they might be worried and fearful about the government taking more control. I mean, we saw pretty much army cars passing by in our area, Silicon Valley, and not only that, police force were taking big steps, and they were, like, shutting down businesses and people that they claim should not have met. And some Christians are concerned and wondering if they're compromising, so to speak, by being shut in and not being able to go to church. The last thing that I want to say concerning this coronavirus thing that is spreading about is that people are generally usually worried and they've got to learn to let things go and let God take full control. And then on the other side, there's that imbalance of people where they over prepare things and then because of that they have to be a burden to different brethren and then they have to raid the pantries and then fight for food and then buy guns and etc so that they can fight it out but I just want to explain this way I just want to explain that 
who who's in control is God Almighty. He's ultimately in control. So you don't have to worry about being underprepared or you don't have to even overprepare and be a paranoid person. Uh, also, you got to realize since God is in full control, you don't have to worry about, oh, am I compromising that I can't keep a church ministry going? I want to give a passage right here that can be a great encouragement for people. This coronavirus does not have to be a situation where you're completely discouraged that you're feeling that you cannot spread the ministry of God. It might be the opposite. It could be an effect where this coronavirus and people being shut shut in can produce greater glory for God. You can do more things in the ministry. Some of you have been slacking in Bible reading. Now you can start focusing on that. Some of you have been so used to the comforts of this life, preoccupied with driving through traffic, taking care of job and everything, now can finally focus on your family and your own self-care. Another thing is that some of you have not even prayed and you got to start praying now. Sometimes a crisis like this can motivate people to pray. And then other situations where people have just been so gluttonous and stuffed themselves with food, perhaps this is a good, ch uh, good opportunity where you can exercise your flesh in learning what it's like to fast. We live in a consumer society where we used to buy and use things, but perhaps this can teach us to be more thrifty and start being saving stuff. I mean, people in third world countries are envious of what Americans have, and we American Christians have been too spoiled. And if you don't live in America, some of you don't live in third world countries like that. Not only that, you got fellow brethren who are being persecuted in other countries around the world, and they're dying for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of the remaining Christians, they just sob about something like this that was to happen when we should see our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ today and in past history who went through worse things than we did. So this is probably a good thing for the church to go through something like this where we can grow. Let me share you one verse that could probably encourage you. The Apostle Paul is perhaps one of the greatest Christians who ever lived. The Apostle Paul, he mentioned about this in the passage where he was actually locked up against his free will. He was imprisoned for doing nothing wrong. Paul, he didn't act like a rebel and then try to break himself free and said, I have my rights as an American. No, what he did was he used whatever limited rights that the Roman government allowed him, allowed him to have, and he used those limited rights to his advantage. He may not have had full freedom like an American citizen, but then he used whatever limited rights that he had to keep the ministry going, and that's what we Christians should do. Whatever rights that you have, you should use it to the glory of God. So don't be discouraged about your rights being taken away. They didn't take away all your rights. Find a certain amount of rights that you have that the that your pagan government, our lost government, has allowed and use it for the glory of God. So with this shut-in process, take every advantage online, for example. They mention about uh, you cannot go out except for essential purposes. Well, then when you're going out for essential purposes, such as shopping and etc., who knows, maybe you can come across people and give them a track or be able to to have a chance to witness to them. Even if you get pulled over by an officer, you're probably their only chance where they can hear the gospel. So who knows? So start to look at things like that. Let's look at Paul. Notice right here what the Word of God reads concerning the Apostle Paul with his limited rights. It says over here, verse 17, And it came to pass after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing. See that? He's not guilty. Nothing against the people or custom of our fathers. Yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. Who, when they had examined me, examined me would have let me go. Why? Because he had every right to be let go. Because there was no cause of death in me. But look at this. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar. Not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. So see, Paul had to use whatever limited rights that he had to keep his ministry going. That's what Christians got to be doing. Not be dumb and not go on a streak of anti-government and etc. Paul was living under Nero. 
I mean, at the time of Nero, they were persecuting Christians for crying out loud. This was bad. This is a time where Christians don't panic, get scared, or even get angry and rebellious. This is a time they got to use whatever opportunity they have to continue the gospel of Christ. Now, let's see over here, as we keep reading down here, Paul was able to give the gospel despite of being locked up in house for several years. Now, within just a couple of weeks, we're already freaking out and getting upset, but Paul, he's able to comply by being locked up in the home, even though he did not like it. Why? For the sake of the gospel. That's the thing. You got to realize that the governments of this world is not ours. It's the devil's. He's in charge. Whether we like it or not, the world's going to run by his game, his system. It's the job of Christians not to fight against it because you're not going to win. The Antichrist is going to take over. Only the King of Kings, Jesus Christ, has to come down himself literally and take away the kingdom from Satan and forcibly set up his own kingdom and right. Not us weak human beings. Us weak human beings, if we're children of God, we got to walk around through the devil's territory, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves in the eyes of the world, and be able to use whatever means to keep the gospel going. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. Look at this. Paul was able to preach the gospel, verse 28, and then verse 30. And Paul dwelt, dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him. That sounds like restricting the gospel, but look at this. Preaching the kingdom of God. It was the opposite. It actually promoted the gospel. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence. Look at this. No man forbidding him. With all confidence, no man forbidding him. Look, pretty soon, all of our rights will be taken away. The Antichrist is going to get set up as one world government, and then the saints of God are going to be persecuted. So with what rights that you have where no man can forbid you to spread the gospel online, to be able to pass out tracts, be able to tell people about salvation, promote our videos, send them our video about the coronavirus. I preached a sermon about the coronavirus that was helpful for a lot of you people, giving you an opportunity of salvation as well. It's called coronavirus, end of the world. What will happen? Promote that one. Another video is called Amazing Dispensational Truth from Genesis to Revelation. Promote that video. That would help people get rid of 90% of wrong doctrine and a lot of deceptions already online. Another video is Why Millions of, Christ why millions of Christians Cannot Go to Heaven. That can be very helpful in making people understand the gospel clearly and getting saved. So, I would like to encourage you people, that this is not a time where you feel sad, disheartened, discouraged. Paul could have done like that because he can't plant churches like he used to. He's stuck at home. But it was only because he was stuck at home we got most of the New Testament written. It was because he was stuck at home that the Jews weren't able to forbid him or stop him because Roman soldiers were protecting him. See, so take this opportunity as something to your advantage rather than as a disadvantage. The devil would sure like for you to take it as a disadvantage. And when he keeps you that way to the ground sulking, then you are sulking on the ground, not spreading the word of the Lord, and that's where Satan wants you to be. To be angry at people, sad, discouraged, frustrated, whining about that what rights were taken away from you. And every second that passes by, a soul drops into hell. Use this chance. Go out and do something for the Lord.